Mexico. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hello. Babs is back from Mexico, and look how tan she is. Hi. Tanner Montgomery. <laughs> Um, this podcast was really cool. We had two of our heroes in the office, Cody Votolato from the Blood Brothers and Denver Daly from Desperacitos. And our friend Adam interviewed them. Yeah, Adam. We love him. <laughs> we love him, man. Tomorrow we have LA. And then this weekend we have Baltimore. Also, look at these cool new sweatshirts. Oh, yeah. Look at them. <laughs> I don't remember ordering them, but we got them. And they'll be for sale tomorrow. Thanks. Bye. Bye. You are now listening to the Ride or Cry podcast. For some reason, I'm a little nervous about doing this one. Why? I, no I don't know. I, you guys have been in some bands that like I like <laughs> a bunch. So, and usually we like I know uh, at least a little bit. Like at least I know some of the people that cruise in and have done this with us. But mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't really know you, know you guys. Uh. So it's always like meeting somebody new is the fir- is like the, the thing that's nerve wracking about it. And also, be like talking to people who you. You you like their music, mm-hmm. so that's that's why I'm nervous. Okay. Fair enough. I feel like I'll just I'll be really upfront and honest about it. <laughs> welcome to uh, yeah, thank you. That's that's very nice. Yeah, that's welcome to, to our our podcast. Have you guys done? Well, first of all, who are you? Who are you guys? So just who so who are you? Who are you? You go. You go first thing, uh, dog. That's all you. Okay. This is a deep deep question. <laughs> Not uh, your name, but who? What are you? I am, what I am what blue. <laughs> Uh, my name's Cody Votolato, and I sing and play guitar in the band called Pressers with my friend uh, Denver Daly. I was in De Separacitos, and I'm in Pressers with Cody. And then we have another band member, uh, Jonah Ray, who plays drums, but he's not here right now. And he wasn't in any emo bands. Was really. he just? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He, he's, he's, he's played he's in, bands. in tons of bands. He's been, yeah, he's been yeah. in so it's many bands. I'm mad you said that. Uh, well, good. <laughs> Where's he at? He's got a meeting because he's Mr. Important <laughs> Meeting Guy. Hey, this is important. This, that's what I'm saying. This is way more important than his little meeting. About have you, his have you guys show. done? See, dude, done. I can't even stop playing with these. Yeah, yeah I know. I know, they're addictive. <laughs> have you guys done podcasts before? I've done a few. I did that, um, what's yeah. it, off the, tr- off the, whatever Jonah Bayer's um, podcast is, I can't, off the tracks. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever been inter- interviewed on one, but... <clears throat> For a period of time when I was living in Seattle, I, I worked with Pat Monahan from the band Train, and he had a um, podcast that he did, and I rec- I engineered it, and we did, um, one of them, the ones that we did was uh, Sir Mix-a-Lot. Oh, so wow. that, that, yeah. that was really fun. Yeah, that is really good. <laughs> but I didn't get interviewed for it. Just Were you just like it. listening to him fucking do it? Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was really cool. He was. How was he Sir was, Mix-a-Lot? Anthony. Um, oh, your close person, <laughs> your oh, close personal basis. family oh, Tony. friend. Yeah. You mean no, Tony? It was re- it was really funny though because, um, you know, I was the liaison between like him and his arrival and stuff to the studio, um, and I got a phone call and I was sort of anticipating it being like his manager or something. And he's like, "Hey, what's up? This is Anthony." Just like called my cell phone and came in. He was so cool. He was like, really, really mellow. Just. Hilarious. He's pretty well regarded. In yeah, Seattle, yeah. Right? yeah. Is totally. that where he's from? Yeah, yeah. I never knew. That. On Broadway, I also, I also didn't. All know. of his songs are about Seattle. Because he did a, he did that record with the presidents of the United States mm-hmm. of America. Also, mm-hmm. okay. I know a lot about Anthony. Do you know a lot about? Yeah. I bet you, you know should, a lot about you presidents should find, too. You should find that podcast because it's really cool. Like, What's the name of it? Uh, what was the name? Patcast. You know, we're yeah. actually we can like link it in hours. Yeah, we'll do it. So, yeah. in, so once every, it was, yeah, so like we'll yeah. do, we you can click on it now and there everybody will be like, I'm done listening to this one. I'm gonna go listen to fucking Sir Mix a Lot now. Yeah, we're gonna listen to the Train Guy interview Sir Mix a Lot because that's way more interesting. But. That's a pretty wild combo <laughs> if you think about it. I guess. Uh, I guess. Oh, speaking of podcasts, I did uh, Harmar's podcast. And that's Jake a great and I, episode. We played together in Harmar Superstar. That's a great story. Yeah. <laughs> Tie it all together. Hey, there's oh, Adam. Oh, Adam. Adam. Hey. Do you guys know Adam? I don't think so. Adam, come on in. Familiar. Adam. I don't know if we've actually met before. He runs. 
Adam runs like, uh, Adam, you can share this with me. Yeah. Hi, Adam. Yes? Yeah, share Adam, it, everybody. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, man. Hello. Yo, you always smell What's so your name? fucking good. Thank you. Uh, Jason. <laughs> nice to meet you, Jason. Here, you can share us. This is loud enough for the both of it's us. It's very loud. Get on yeah. Do you need headphones? So I walked. No, I don't like my hair. Oh, is it? Can you feel? Yeah. I don't want to mess my hair up. Oh, nice. Oh, it looks good. Thank you. You're really growing it out. I really am. Yeah. I walked into the vintage clothing store next door thinking that it was this, and I was like, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> what have you guys done? <laughs> really, it was like really fucked with my mind. What, what's his name? Eric? Dude, Eric, so the guy, he'll never ever see this in a million wow. years. I don't know, maybe he will, but so Eric's in this band, he like runs this vintage clothing store next door, and he is also in this band. What are they called? But he did this fucking music. They're called thing. Stone Temple Pilots? They're not called Stone Temple them? Pilots. The guy next door, is that what we're talking about? Or yeah, the dude next door, and he like fucking has, the, he was like, you guys should check out my music. You should check this out. Like, what should I do? He like it's asked us for so like. It's going to be so tight if he listens I know. to this. And he, we like put it, he has like a music <laughs> video of him just like ripping on a guitar, like in the ocean. Really? Yeah, it's like really like a bunch of like overlay <laughs> shit. It looks really, it's like, and then we were listening to it, and we are like, this is actually pretty like really good is there a name yeah. of the band tell us dude i don't know what's the name of the can band we link that can we link that, yeah, link that like... youtube video yeah we yeah. definitely yeah. can so right now yeah <laughs> so adam also does a podcast he also runs rap parties <laughs> yeah it's a rap parties cool. all right but is a huge like he's a fucking huge uh, I'm an emo nerd yeah he's a fucking nerd cool. when you say that. rap part like when you finish filming something or when you like listen to like rap music like Do what? I, well, I grew up listening to rap music, but then I got into like, I'm 35, so I got into listening to bands and stuff, and I was like, mm-hmm. I heard Modest Mouse when I was like 20, uh-huh. and I kind of like changed a bunch of stuff, but I, I grew up like a hip-hop head, so I kind of stayed true to that as well. Cool. But, I know you're from Omaha, Nebraska. I am. Were you into Simon Joyner? Yeah, he's a good buddy of mine. My first tattoo ever, Shattered in the Heart, oh, Scattered wow. in the Brain, from a Joy Division poster. Yeah. That Connor covered. Yeah. Yeah, he's a real fucking nerd. Yeah. <laughs> I have another Connor Oberst tattoo. Really? Um, Let's Sail Away, Let's Past sail away. the Cradle These Waves. Is that that's a, yeah, yeah, that's my favorite album, I think. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I like I kind of, I like Fevers, but I kind of fell off after that. You right. Know? But to me, like. Oh, they're all good. Th- they're, they're all, all good. Great. I'm not talking, talking shit. About? I'm just saying, like. But everything, but, but, the but Fevers and Post Fevers is like, whoa. Right. But they're all, they all are. I mean, obviously, he's amazing. I literally was just, um in Austin, Texas for like a different gig and just so happens that he, Connor was playing and I was like, holy shit. So I went to the in store at Waterloo and to the concert. Oh, awesome. I love them. Yeah, it's great. But yeah, for my money, like I think letting off the happy, I just like the lo-fi kind yeah. of basement style recording, but I like them all. I'm not... were, were you guys friends back then during that? Yeah, we, uh, I mean, we've been friends since we were like nine years old. Crazy. We like, grew up not far from each other in Omaha, but we um, just had a lot of common friends and like my brother was in this children's theater with a lot of like him and some other friends and so it was like a random we're all like in plays and like uh clark beckley from the faint and i were both in this like weird like kids like juggling club really you guys were juggalos yeah we were juggalos yeah (laughs) we're ahead of our time um yeah what do you guys do when you i don't fucking remember anything from when i was nine like i don't remember like any yeah like my. i moved to seattle when i was nine i remember that where were you from originally texas where? Uh, I was grew up in a small town called Frost, Texas, south of Dallas. It's a very, Sick. very small, like 400-person population. That's like the smallest town. It's really small. Yeah. How did you guys meet? Mm. That's a good question. How did music? we music? Yeah. Um, I wonder if... Did um, I know your sister before I knew you? Maybe? Might have, yeah. I think that was... I think I knew Brandy through, like, Tim Casher or someone like that, and then... Mm-hmm. I feel like did we meet at that at that show at um, you guys played at the Fonda maybe or did we know each other before then? Which show? The it's like Blood Brothers and um, was it they called Entertainment or Celebration? Oh, or Celebration. Celebration. Yeah, that might have been it. <laughs> and it was somewhere it was like, like that. Yeah. It's yeah. Like they were Dude, the best. I remember the the thing about Blood Brothers was Jacob and I were talking about this before, and it like I think if there was one, Jacob and I grew up in Tucson together. Okay. Like playing in like a, we never played in a band together, but we were, there was nothing to do in Tucson. So they would play together. So there was, <laughs> we would just like get wasted right. <laughs> and fucking start bands. And yeah. that's like everybody in Tucson, that's what, what they did. But like, I remember that, like the, like Blood Brothers was driving around Tucson. Mm-hmm. It's a, it was like a really, really, really. Well, it was like right in, in, it was right in the era where like, 
GSL mm-hmm. and like three one G popped off when we well it's like two thousand two thousand one yeah like, I mean Morgan's not that much older than I but like uh like prime high school days yeah it was like right after that drive up to Phoenix to go to like a Blood Brothers show or like. Yeah. So you guys are like Nita's Hideaway. Hey, where would the Blood Brothers play in Phoenix? I was trying Nita's to... Nita's Hideaway. It was Nita's Hideaway? Yeah. Was that the one that had the, the outside Yeah, venue. it had the, the green room was like a trailer, like, yeah, a, like yeah. an Airstream. Yeah. yeah. And then probably, you guys probably played like Modified. modified. Like early days was Modified, yeah. I remember that. And but then I, I think remember. in Tucson, you probably s- played like was it Solar Scrappies Scra- yeah. or Solar it was Culture. Solar Culture. Yeah, you played Solar Culture. Yeah, I saw you guys at Solar Culture. You guys were too like... Like left, we played. Play, we played. Is that is was Solar Culture like the kind of little like hippie gallery? Yeah. yeah. So we played there with that band Rainier Maria and Mile Marker. We went to. I Mile remember Marker. that show. And and I like we always would laugh about that show because the promoter like at the end of the night, Steve was, and I was like shout out was mm-hmm. like kind of like <laughs> bummed. They were like normally we don't we don't have bands like you guys play here, and oh. I always remember it being like a big joke because wow. it was like I think that. Rainier Maria was meant to play, and I think they were maybe a little more of their ilk. Yeah. Um, and and then fucking... somehow we we got on to the show or something. And I just re- always recalled him not like yeah. being super thrilled. <laughs> Dude, there, there was a time, I think you guys did Scrappies, and it was, well, I was telling Jacob also, like, I, I've seen the, I saw the Locust like three times at Scra- and every single time I've thrown up just from like watching them. And I was watching you play guitar mm-hmm. and I barfed. <laughs> but just because, like, hey. it was like, I was just like, cause I used to I have that effect. <laughs> dude, it was like, I was just like, I fucking forgot. Cause like, I don't drink anymore. And so like when I did, I drank fucking a lot. So I just get really wasted. I remember staring at and you were moving really? too fast. And I just threw up in the middle of fucking scrappies. <laughs> was were that you? the oops tour? I don't, did oops dude, tour come through there? Here's the thing. I remember such I, I remember things like that. Yeah. I, I don't remember like whole years. So the like Oops Tour was, was Locust, Arab on Radar, Get Hustle, Jesus. Lightning Bolt, and the Blood Brothers. Holy shit. Yeah, I like, that show would happen now. 2001. I would, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't yeah. that be fucking great? I don't remember yeah. if it came to Tucson or not. I, I don't rem- I know. I don't know if it did. That it, seems like a Phoenix. That seems like a Phoenix, Phoenix thing. Seems like a Phoenix buy. Right. <laughs> you guys know. I, you guys know I grew up in wow. Phoenix. Did you really? Yeah. Really? You guys didn't know that about me. No, oh, I didn't know that. Why don't you talk about this ever? I don't know. We only talk about Tucson every fucking ten yeah. seconds. Every podcast I, we talk about Tucson for I a love long Tucson. time. Tucson's when great. I lived in Phoenix, we never went to Tucson, but Tucson kids would come to Phoenix. Yeah, it's like somehow for some reason when you graduate high school you're like I'm moving on up but Tucson is infinitely cooler than Phoenix, oh hell yeah though. but you didn't know that when I was in high school because I went recently and Tucson I and, and Phoenix time. are like West LA and East LA it's the, oh. the best way to describe it is like no one dares they try their best not to go to to, to Phoenix if you're from Tucson or if you're from Phoenix you won't go. To you it. rarely go to Tucson, gotcha. and depending on traffic, it takes exactly as long to get from. Oh, totally. Dude, 100%. That's like yeah, exactly. when like I drive out it's there, exactly and I like the same thing. Yeah. Everyone's like, "Dude, how are you gonna fly into Phoenix and like rent a car?" I'm like, "What are you talking about? This is, yeah. this is like my commute every yep. day." <laughs> it's like when you the there's like a <laughs> when you fucking graduate. And people are like, I'm out of here. I'm out of this fucking small town. Like, I'm moving this. to Phoenix. I'm going to Phoenix. It's yeah. not, you're like, moving not, on up? You're not moving on up. Yeah. You're just <laughs> going a little bit further north. <laughs> just step into the side. So how Which long have up. you guys been doing the new band? Uh, since the beginning of the year, I think. Rad. Mm-hmm. I met Jonah. We kind of both knew Jonah separately. Um, I met Jonah and his wife, Deanna, at FYF. I think not last year, but the year prior. Maybe it was, I don't know. Head Wound City played. Yeah, it was like last year or the year before, and and well, we that met. was the same year you guys played, right? Blood Brothers. No. Okay. Blood Brothers played 2014. Blood Brothers played 2014, which yeah. is like one of the most epic performances Dude, that was ever. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That one was actually probably one of my favorites. That Blood was Brothers insane. Shows. I do this thing where, like, especially at FYF, I do I do work for them, but I always end up going mm-hmm. and. Almost every year, I don't drink now, but like in in the past when I've gone, I've just been backstage drinking the whole time, and I don't watch like one band. And Blood Brothers was the one band that I really watched. cool. Yeah. Well, miss that was it. that was one not to miss. Because that, was, that was really was awesome. awesome. So yeah, good. it was fun. Noted. It was a good stage too because it was like the right size for mm-hmm. you. Yeah, and they weren't like too like mo- removed from the crowd. And yeah, it was it good. Was, like, kind yeah. of like you're there. And we didn't do that many shows. I think we only did five shows. 
four on that whole reunion. Yeah, was wasn't it just like different cities, right? Yeah, we just did. We did a Seattle day. How was that? Seattle was awesome. Going back there, where'd you guys play? We played the Showbox, yeah. which was kind of always like. That's the one the place on play there. like near Pike Street, mm-hmm. right? Right yeah. across the street from yeah. the market. Um, and then we we came here and we played FYF, and then I think we. What else did we play? We played in New York. We played a show in Brook or a place called Warsaw in New York, mm-hmm. oh, which yeah. was really you awesome. And mm-hmm. someone filmed it, and it actually sounds really good. It's somewhere out there on on the internet. We'll put like, it on in our. So I recommend checking it out because it, it was really. <laughs> We're really, gonna have really like fun. thirty things for people yeah, to watch. All these links. Ricky's that. over. See the thing is, this? dude. Ricky's over there. Like he's listening to shit that we are like not allowed to say, and like marking down the. Uh, like if I talk about like doing drugs in my car, he'll be like, "You said that several times, and we have to take." that out so you know just, another favorite FYF performance work. was though mm-hmm. what? that's Perocitos oh, what year was yeah. that 2000 2000 you guys it was like the same year Headwind City played because it was the day before the we played oh okay 15 it and was 15 against me yeah yep. well you that guys played right. a few times cause I saw you at the the old location this was at the this is with, I think that might have been with Harmar maybe no cause the well, do, I, I remember know. seeing no because this was at the, I remember distinctly seeing your face really big on the screen because you guys played the main stage. Yeah, but it was at the old at the spring you know, at what is it called at um LA Historic Park. Yeah, yep. But then did you guys play the Coliseum? I don't think so. I think I was just there to see Blood Brothers. Okay. Honestly. Wait, that was 2015. No, the, the, the that was like season. way. Was, or was it? No. LA State 14. Park was like 2013, 12 or 13. Yeah, somewhere in there. Because they've been at the new location for like three years now. This but that was another year. epic one too. Like something about FYF. Like yeah. I don't know that one. Even like Sean Carlson was like <laughs> that was insane. Actually, um, I sort of attribute. The Blood Brothers playing again to Sean Carlson because every year after we broke up, he was constantly asking us to come play his festival until eventually, like, we were able to do it. Because every year it was like it would come up and it'd be like, oh no, we can't, or someone didn't want to, or or we couldn't all get together. And then it was just the the stars aligned for that one and everyone was available. Was it, was it like one of those things where you guys would have done it if it, like, everybody worked hours or somebody's? I think there were, there was a while where just there wasn't interest in doing it. Do you guys all get along now? Oh yeah. That's good. 100%. Absolutely. We never really didn't get along. It was I just, feel like you, you just, know, we not, started not the band. Like, we started the band when I was fifteen. Yeah, so I feel like you guys started the band really for ten young. years. How old were you when you were when you guys were playing in uh, Waxwing? Uh, I was like 15, oh. 14, 15 when I started that or started playing in the band because Rocky started that band and then maybe six or seven months later. How much older is Rocky than you? Rocky is thirty eight, thirty nine. Yeah, he's like four or five. I'm thirty five. All so. right. Um, he's like four years older. Totally. Did you guys know you were going to do this forever? When you like started fucking playing at 15, you're like, this is just what we're going to do. No, I had, had no idea, you know? And I think that, um, I don't know if it's the same for Denver, but I never planned on it. I was in community college, just didn't know what I was doing. And then, you know, Ross Robinson started hounding the Blood Brothers. And, you know, at first we were really apprehensive because new metal was the devil. Um, and he, you know, and he produced, you know, for us, it, it yeah. was, you know, it was not cool. And, but he was really persistent and eventually we were just like, okay, well, it's, it's like, this guy seems kind of crazy. And he had done the, at the drive-in record and we were, you know, friendly with those guys. And so they said that it was cool and we ended up working with them and then it was like, oh, okay, now I'm doing this now forever. Now this is what I'm doing. Yeah. So. Did I, I mean, I just remember it was like when it first came out, it was such a, it was like it was one of those game changer bands. <laughs> it was like then every band wanted, yeah, to five screamers, yeah. which is hilarious yeah. because it was you know it was music that people didn't like. <laughs> so I mean, it was always kind of crazy to me that people ended up being attracted to that band because it was such. But strange. I think it like <laughs> it really defines a moment in music that like stands out. Well, at least for like people our age, I think, because mm-hmm. I. I don't know if like if that music came out now if it would stand out as oh, much. Yeah. It was like such a weird. Well, transition. and also it's crazy because you had like the the three one G and GSL thing happening, yeah. and then you know in Omaha you had like all of the Saddle Creek, or shit even like J Tree and, and like yeah, J Tree. Yeah. Even Kill Rock Stars at that time was like mm-hmm. on on that fringe like 
I remember. I mean, even with gossip yep. or um, I don't. What is like? What was the red light sting? Red light sting. Were yeah. they on Kill Rock Stars? I don't, I don't think, think they so. were. No, but, but like they toured with Blood Brothers. I lot. guess like <laughs> when punk went sassy mm-hmm. is like the best way to fucking <laughs> yeah. like talk about it. It was but... just like the San Diego hardcore <laughs> thing. Yeah, it was like sort of taking the testosterone. Yeah, out of aggressive music. Totally, and, and kind of you know breaching that gap of like skinny you know punk <laughs> yeah. kids and yeah. like heavy like, like yeah. you know it, that fucked I mean, up yeah you guys did it like and... i mean that was like the thing where that that was when everybody was like all right i'm gonna be in a hardcore band now <laughs> like i get to like but I, scream i get to do that now. i remember we were recording burn piano island burn when uh read music speak spanish came out and i re- remember buying it and picking it up and there's totally a song like, I had gotten super into Bright Eyes, like, shortly before then as well, and then that record. And then there was some songs on Burn that weren't written that we wrote in the studio that were, like, kind of, like... Wow. You know, I, I was influenced on guitar by it, you know, yeah. and so I think this the song The Shame. That's which awesome. Is, which is the last but song I, on the record. So yeah, we, should, mean, we should talk about, like... Um, publishing later i guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah get- <laughs> no but and if, like full disclosure like um obviously that record was already out like you said at that point but um like set fire to the face on fire is like one of my it's in my top 10 like i made a list one time for like a some interview or something and it's like that's definitely one of those like i caught like the chasing the dragon song you that know like where you're just so like good. that's one of my favorite blood brother songs that, how that. did you guys record the drums on that record? um or that song microphones and oh sick no no i don't know <laughs> actually it's funny because but it sounds like there's like right doesn't it sound like there's like two drum sets i don't know i'm like i don't know i'll have to I you know it's, it's funny you ask that because right before we did this john goodmanson who produced that record yeah um, well he he called me and i was like oh i gotta take this yeah, real yeah. quick i got a second <laughs> So I'm gonna call him back and ask him because I don't know. Wow. I know we recorded it at a studio called Robert Lang in Seattle. I don't think there were two drum tracks on it, but John just like- It might just be like a weird like delay on it or something. Yeah, and his style is very just like, he does not obsess. He throws the mics up and he gets you to play, tweaks a few things and then it's, you know, it's probably just Mark. I think it's Mark. I remember watching (laughs) him play that. You You know, know? it kind of reminds me of that guy from uh, was it the Walkman who would like, he had such a crazy, he played, he was really small and he played this huge kit and he would like, he'd do those, um, he'd do like the crazy, like what, 30 second or 64 notes like on the bottom of the hi-hat, which wow. I've never seen before. It's like a weird thing. I don't know, there's certain drums. I never saw Mark I forgot that. about the Walkman. Yeah. I love that record. <laughs> yeah, right? On the rat, like I just remember yeah. watching him, him Whoa, play that really and then bad. watching Mark play Set Fire to the Face on Fire and I was just like, what is happening? Is it weird now to like, to be in in bands with like people who you grew up like liking uh, like it's awesome dude because that's what we're kind of like with emo night like that's what we get to do but now sometimes it ruins it well with you when you meet <laughs> when you meet Lord people Dicks. that you yeah. like yeah. looked up to right well especially like touring and stuff my my thing was like man i don't know if i want to ever like say hi to this band because mm-hmm. I liked them when I was like and younger. Then they I ask listen you to, them to join, now. and then you get kicked out. Nah, I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess there's the the, the the mystery. Well, the mystery in uh, in all life is gone now with yeah. With the way well, I think just it's just like interact, yeah, with the internet know? and being older. Yeah, I think it's like yeah. We I mean we had one of our the John we had John Feldman in here, and that was mm-hmm. fucking like so. Yeah, that one was like really we were like what the fuck do we do you know we yeah, didn't yeah. know he just like cruised in sat at the end and we were like he was like what's up guys you know he's like really like a ready to go yeah and yeah. that <laughs> and that was like now we like we've all become like friendly with him and now it's like i mean goldfinger like gr- like that was really like that was really young like really really yeah. young like it was like there's no no way in hell when I was listening to Hang Ups, I was going to be like, I'm going to be texting this guy fucking later. Yeah. And that, it's really cool to like see how everybody's like come around and like we, like we are of the age where we can fucking sit around and talk about stuff and be like, remember when we did this? Mm-hmm. And then now you guys are in bands together. It's really fucking Are there cool. any bands that you've met that have bummed you out? Oh, tons. <laughs> Name names. <laughs> was Bark, Bark, I, Bark I, one of them? I don't them? know. <laughs> bark, bark, like ones bark. that like I really li- loved and then I was disappointed with like, like my interaction with them? Yeah. Or I don't even know. I can't remember. I'm sure there's been, I mean, on the opposite, um, kind of what you were just talking about, like when uh, we played, 
one of the last times that Desa played in DC, uh, Ian Mackay came out, and we were all just so nervous. We just didn't know what to do. We just kept introducing him to everyone. <laughs> over and over, like, have you, have you met Connor yet? Oh, cool. Have you met Landon? Oh, cool. Landon would be like, have you met Denver? Like, I mean, that was all we just did. It was like, we didn't know what else to say. We were just all so nervous. Like, oh, my God. Yeah, what to do? This has been yeah, like a... Cool. And he's so cool. He's like the coolest dude That's what we found. We found out yeah. that like... And then, like, just like today, I was like, I'm kind of nervous. And then I find out everybody's just like this... Everybody's just humans. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> the same. They're not like fucking... And it... Which is like a really weird and comforting thing and also terrifying. Well, we are silently judging you I know. on this interview. So. I'm seriously, I couldn't be hotter. <laughs> I fucking, you have a huge hoodie on. I did. I fucking Why? made a mistake. Well, because it was fucking cold as shit outside. Are you wearing a shirt underneath it's it? It's really cold. Cold. I can't Classic wear. overcast day in LA. I can't wear a shirt under. I don't wear uh, underwear or sh- like undershirt. Okay. Like I wear, as cool. little, I wear as little clothes as possible. <laughs> I'm going to sit next to you. So, so, so um, what else is going on? Well, guys? how'd you get kicked out of Harmar? I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about how we started our band. Oh, yeah. We so so you, you'd met, you were saying you met... Met Jonah at FYF, yep. became friendly, you knew him separately, and then I think I was like, I was watching something, something online, and then... And, came up and it was like Jonah playing drums and I was like holy shit like Jonah's a total ripper on the drums like I had no idea and then we were just we were like let's just let's jam sometime and then we just jammed in like January yeah and I think you and I had been talking about doing something for a while yeah we bumped into each other at the airport yeah like Like, five (laughs) in the morning like the only two dudes like there pretty much like let's start a band yeah and uh (laughs) And then you were like, oh, yeah, I'd been talking to Jonah about doing something. I was like, oh, no, Jonah, let's do that. Yeah, that was kind of how it happened. Yeah. What's it sound? What's like, what does this sound like? Man, I hope, uh, when is this going to air? Uh, Probably it, like, in, next week. Oh, like, okay. We Monday. usually do it like Mondays. Yeah. Like, okay. We don't have anything recorded. Yeah, so. we're, I was going to say we're going to try to record like next week and get like even just some rough demo type recordings. But I don't know. How do you describe it? You I just think stuff. it kind of sounds like. Uh, maybe kind of like Jawbreaker or something. It's really? Like, That's yeah, it's sort really of, good. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just two guitars and drums. It's, you know, it's... Yeah, I'm playing like a baritone, so it, like it's weird to, like I'm kind of doing, I'm splitting it between a guitar rig and a bass mm-hmm. rig, and so it kind of fills out the low end and stuff. But yeah, I think, I don't like know. Little, like, yeah, just a little like, uh, well, it's, it's not thrashy. I don't know what it is. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, this is probably, ter- I'm, I'm horrible at this stuff. I hate this stuff, but like, I think to me it sounds like um like a a really tough like a tougher version of like the Pixies kind of mm-hmm. to me like there's a lot of sounds fun. great. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned great. you mentioned Waxwing. It's a little more punk version of Waxwing. Oh, tight. Yeah, but know. to me I can tell like I can hear like there's it's you can tell like it's a, both of us playing guitar like I can hear like cool yeah. like Cody things and <laughs> little weird Denver things and yeah, I think that that's what, like you guys both have a really like, very distinctive way of. Mm-hmm. I mean, I throw up when I listen to yeah. you. <laughs> it makes so, me look at what make that. Morgan throw up. That's, that's so like, sick. That's that's like dude, it's the testament. Like I did it with every time I die too. Mm-hmm. I just like I remember us holding on to the back of like a fence thing, and I was watching him, and I just fucking threw up on myself. I just like couldn't go to shows without throwing up for like yeah. a good like. Well, I can especially see during locusts, it's pretty intense. Yeah. You, you guys were, remember when the locusts made like uh, Coke mirrors? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, remember those? Do you remember? Yeah. I just I like don't I I found it recently and I don't know where it is, but I can't ever remember a piece of merch being as like I was like this is. It's pretty rad. Yeah, like you know, <laughs> they did a bunch of fun. dude. They were they're goofy guys. They yeah. had the belt buckles and you know those guys. Um, Justin's like I know Justin, mm-hmm. but I never really knew any of the other dudes. They're all they seem tight. Yeah, they're great. I just saw. Joey, the keyboard player, was my sister had a barbecue on Memorial Day, so he he was there. He's great. And then JP and Gabe, I play in Headwind City with them, so they rip. Damn, um, you're a busy guy. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, but Headwind City's not super active, so. Yeah, I know. Like the last two years have been more active, and then mm-hmm. are you guys just like doing other we stuff. We kind of just field things as they come. Yeah, I mean Jordan is going to school at UCLA. You know, there's there's kids. Jordan's JP's in Dead Cross. One of the nicest dudes. Yeah, he's the best. Yeah, he's the best. So were you also in um, Past Lives? No. Then? Okay. I played in Jaguar Love. Okay. 
which was like there were two sort of options. Yeah, that was like right at, right after Blood Brothers, yeah. right? I played with Past Lives a bunch in my old band. Uh, we were booked by Michelle. Oh, okay. And I just forget. I don't. It's so funny. Like I just can't ever remember who's in what band. Yeah, yeah. you guys and did a so bunch. Yeah, you guys out of like all of the people we've had in here, it, 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 which is reminds me a lot of like Tucson guys. It's just like we stood. St- did a band, stopped a band, did another band mm-hmm. with other people who were in those bands. Yeah. And I, I like that that is the dynamic between like... Have you guys done like seven degrees of like... Six, six degrees, Jacob. Is it six degrees? Separation. Six degrees of... Uh, who, would, who would you think is like the pinpoint person in that between linking you guys? Mm. Oh, I don't know. Casher? Yeah, maybe Tom Casher. I don't know. Connor. I think Casher is sure. definitely like the the um he's like the start of the whole Omaha music scene and he really does tie like everyone together one way or another. Mm-hmm. Dude, he lives here now too. Yeah. I exactly. moved here last not this last February, but in February. You have a you still have a house in Omaha, right? Yeah, I'm actually gonna go there tomorrow. My um tenants moved out and so I'm gonna go back there and do some work to it and you dabble on a lot of side business. <laughs> yeah, uh, I used someone to. Dan. So we, you know Dan Hernandez from the yeah, yeah. So we, Dan, we hit up. We have this shout out uh, the the group thread. We have but, a group thread, and Dan was said that you have a travel agency. Yep, of that too. Shit, What's Dan's that about? Uh, so um, my we had a travel agent for Desa, um, and I got to be good friends with her and. Uh, because I would go on and not like we met when we were playing Riot Fest in Denver. She had a bunch of bands. Um, she does like the Pixies and the Flaming Lips and all these different bands. And so we met up there and uh, got to talking. And I was, I'm like a total like points nerd, like with all that stuff, with all the, you know, airlines and hotels. And so is TJ. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's awesome, right? <laughs> and so I was it's like, a different I person. Do not it's like a different personality. It's a, yeah, it's a hobby. Yeah. It's like you get the credit cards, this whole thing. So I was like telling her all these things. Like, oh, you should be doing this. You should be doing this. Then she had one of her agents like quit. And she's like, oh, I need an agent. And uh, I was like, well, show me the ropes and I'll That's awesome. do it. So I was, like, it was a great thing for me to do like on tour or like, you know, when I'm just waiting around backstage or traveling myself, like I can just sit there on a computer and book hotels for bands so yeah I work is it for just her. music strictly yeah i mean yeah pretty much so if i need like a flight you can't uh, i don't actually do flights that's the one because i i feel like they mess up and then people are <laughs> furious and i just don't want to deal with any of that stuff but the hotels are really straightforward and i like enjoy it and then all meanwhile the hotels like want to kind of wine and dine me so i bring the bands there because hell yeah some of the bands like i did i did M83 and they needed like 21 rooms Fucking a. for one night, you know, for their whole band and crew. For all and those synths. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just the synth room. hotel rooms for synths. <laughs> yeah. So the hotels are like, yeah, we would love to have them stay here. So. Yeah, my sister just got engaged and she was like telling me that they would tour the hotels and they would offer her free rooms. Yeah. So, so if you like Try crew, out. yeah. So if you just like, are, like go with somebody and be like, we just got engaged and we're thinking about your hotel, mm-hmm. you're going to get like a free here. night. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Adam. Ty. Adam. Yeah. Get married. Um, <laughs> I have a question about <laughs> Casher and the Omaha scene. So he was kind of like the pinnacle of it. Like before, was Slow Down Virginia before Commander Venus? Yeah. Yep. So was Tim kind of like the first dude out there? <laughs> I'm such a nerd. So was Tim kind of like the first dude out there that was like really like ma- like starting the music scene? Yeah, like he he did um he did well there was also before that there was like March Hairs which was uh Tim and I think I'm getting this right. Tim and like Connor's older brother and a couple other guys and then that kind of split and became uh slow down and then there was also Steve Peterson from Slowdown, who later did Criteria, right. he had a band called Smash Mouth. Yeah. Before people don't know Smash Mouth is Omaha band. Who? Smash Mouth. <laughs> they were like who were they? Us. They were a band before that. Before the somebody. Before. Yeah. Before Wait, that. there was they another cool. band called Smash yeah. Mouth. Yeah. They were yeah. like, and they were really good, but uh, <laughs> Slowdown yeah. Virginia. I just wanted to throw that in there. Like, they don't get enough uh, shout outs. Smash Mouth, the original Smash Mouth. But oh um, God. yeah. Smash Mouth UK. Yeah, <laughs> or something of that. But yeah, so Casher, he started slow down, and then that inspired like, I mean, I think Connor was equally inspired by that, and probably Simon Joyner. But um, Simon Joyner was like a kind of a different. He was more, you know, like a folk. I love Simon. Hero, you know what I mean? And, and Casher's more like band, like you can yeah. have a band, and it's a cool band, and it doesn't sound like you know whatever uh, anything else. And 
so yeah, that inspired like the Beckley brothers, which did the faint and then Connor and, and pretty much all the like original Saddle Creek bands all stemmed from Casher. Cause it was like, you know, it was like Tucson. It was mm-hmm. like this small town and like, I mean, it's, it's a mix between a small town and a big city, but everyone knows each other and everyone just plays music and it gets cold in the winters and you just go I mean, I feel basement. like I'm gonna, even, I'm gonna, I'm, I've, Mother. I'm gonna see Cash. I'm gonna see Cash this weekend in New York. Oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah. Saturday. I'm he's excited. The Ink Factory. Oh man, he's the best. Like that I was another him. weird like because I grew up, you know, from I think that was one of my first like shows. I think my first concert was like Nine Inch Nails, but my first like show Hell yeah. was you know seeing um, Slow Down when I was like I don't know in eighth grade or something. And so I really truly. Grew up like looking up to him, and then like later we were like roommates and stuff. And I was like, "This is crazy." Well, you're roommates to Casher. Another thing is, I know he moved here to make. <laughs> any weird I, fucking... at, I know he moved here to make to make movies, and I know that um, what was the what was the last Good Life record, the um, Help Want at Nights, and I know that's kind of like the soundtrack to the film. And I saw an IMDb, whatever that the film was made, but I can't find it. Anymore. Yeah, I don't Do know. You know. I don't know mm. what happened with that. Like, yeah, he's it's such a mysterious, like. It, I want to see it so bad. I know. And I remember, like, he went to um, Sundance and, like, did some stuff for it there and, like, all this stuff. I'm like, well, yeah, but where is it? I remember he gave me the screenplay for that, like, when he was first doing it. Like, yeah. Like, before he even moved here, he was like, I'm writing a screenplay. eBay. Yeah. Because, <laughs> no, that record Two is, words. like, that record eBay. is such, that record's like a fucking movie. Yeah. There's, like, one song on that record where he's talking about, um, where like the dudes in the hotel room and she's at the home and they're picturing each other and wishing one of them would call the other and it's like playing in my head like a movie. He's yeah. such an amazing writer. Yeah, he's such a prolific. Yeah. I mean, he's he's the best. Yeah. You say picturing each other? Yeah, they're like picturing like like because she's in the ho- hotel room and he's like I see <laughs> I see her face in the pillow and she's at home thinking about him too but they don't know they're thinking about each other. I want Adam on every podcast. Yeah, I know. This is so awesome. do you not do you not normally come? Do no, 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 no. Adam, so Adam does his own. I think Adam's been a part of like emo night from from almost the beginning. He like okay. does a lot of the he does the patio outside, and sometimes he'll travel with us, but. Um, He's been just, he does his own, he's got his own podcast. I do. But he does like, I, I do like a rap he's podcast like a, for, he's a better um, okay, podcast so than rappers. us. Yeah, yeah, I do it for All Def Digital, which is Def Jam's like media mm-hmm. company. Uh huh. Um, so yeah, it's like I interview rappers for them. Because I thought, oh. I, I truly was confused. Because, you know, rap out parties. here in LA, everyone's like, oh, we're going to a rap party. We just finished filming. So I didn't oh, know. Oh, that's a rap party. Oh, that's no, what no, I was, no. yeah, earlier I was no, like, no, so no, is no, it like rappers? Yeah, like hip hop, yeah. His His events are scary. Oh like, yeah? Every, yeah, I'm yeah. doing one. Um, <laughs> oh, it's thir- scary. I'm doing one Thursday anxiety. that I'm mixing yeah, bands. Like, I'm mixing shit. bands with rappers. Have you heard Kate Moss or Girl Pusher? Yeah, yeah fucking uh, gnarlies. Oh yeah, you know Kate. Moss. Yeah, of course, Tucson. Yeah, everything. Is everything. Like, everything stems out of them. It's cool, actually. Like these dudes, like the music yeah. has become. Like everybody was like, it seems the last couple of years they're like, all right, we're done, done with electronic stuff. Let's like get back into like guitars. Let's get back mm-hmm. into rock and roll. And it's really nice to see. Like I've been going to way more concerts in the last like six months than I have in in a really long time. Strictly because like people are playing. Yeah, again. people are playing again, and it's like really nice to yeah. feel an energy of a crowd that like wants to be like be involved and like. And that was the cool thing about emo night is like is we are just playing other people's music, but it's like a live event. They're like, it really does feel like a show. It's a it's it a wild. Feel like the yeah. Yeah, and I mean that's like how we grew up, and then the electronic thing happened, and mm-hmm. I didn't feel a part of really, mm-hmm. and I didn't really understand it. I got it. so into electronic music. That's because you're a fucking nerd. <laughs> I love electronics. Both no, of my right. older brothers so like were really into. Right. What? You were doing remixes right. and stuff. What? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've done, what? I've been I've been remixing music and yeah. Um, I did a few Spoon remixes and a Hell Mets yeah. remix and Spoon I, also from Omaha, right? Uh, no. no, no, they're from Austin. They're from Austin, Austin, Austin but there's weird. Portland. There's, yeah, there's another. Uh, it's Chris Simpson from Mineral. Yeah, he's born in Omaha and uh, but then he moved to Austin and there's all these weird. Yeah. I feel like Brit spent a lot of time in Omaha too, like back in the. But I made I made a record using a lot of synthesizers and electronics under like a Ableton. No, I use Logic actually. Um, Get at it. Get but it's called it. it's called JR Slayer, and it's also like a it's a production. It's like That's my rad. producer name. I produced a band um, called Dude York who put out a record on Hardly Art this year. That's oh, rad. super awesome that you guys should check out. And they're a rock band. They're not like electronic or anything, but um, so. 
rad. Yeah. Well, I think I'm, I'm, I like electronic, not ED, EDM. I didn't understand the EDM. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, I like get it. I like get it. I understand yeah. why people like it. But like, I never personally got into it. So there was like a real like lull for a second where I didn't like really re- relate to a lot of stuff that I was hearing. Yeah, I think that's understandable. Yeah. To, to me, EDM was like blog house met trap rap. And it became this other but thing. isn't it kind of more about the experience yeah. than the the music itself? I think I mean for me it's I think both of my older brothers were really into like drum and bass or like Aphex yeah. Twin or yeah. like Warp yeah. Records yeah like all I, that shit's fucking awesome EDM came like way after I was even into music like mm-hmm. that's like even still currently like a a recent thing but yeah I mean I think even. I mean, you see a lot of like rock bands being influenced by a lot of that stuff still, mm-hmm. and I think it's just good to combine it. But Morgan is right; like, it's it's nice to see this transition with people kind of like going back into rock music and yeah. picking up a guitar. Yeah, it's great. Like, how do you guys feel about starting? Like, it's like now, it's like let's start a band. It's like I will never not be in a band, mm-hmm. but and mm-hmm. which is like, I feel like. It's like that's what we just you have to do it. Like we never play, like we never do anything, but it's like Yeah, it, that's kind of the hardest part is just finding time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I was like I think we should call ourselves the schedules cuz it was just like it's mm. a constant battle of like Did. Oh, I'm out of town, I'm out of town. I got to do this thing, I got to do this thing. Yeah. It, it works out. But when the yeah, when the stars align, it's awesome. It just feels like not natural to be like even you're you're in a fucking band, but you don't do well, not, any, right not now. anymore, but I I I've I've been trying to write more. I think the mm-hmm. weird thing about getting older is and like realizing that you need money to pay for things and stuff. <laughs> Instead of just yeah, playing like, guitar in your room. Yeah. Sleeping on yeah. floors and like eating garbage. Um, is that it sucks because you have to you have to schedule it. Like you're totally mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And there's a part of you that feels like you don't care about it as much because it's like up it's not it's it it feels like to me like a hobby i think it's yeah i mean it's it's kind of i i think about this all the time just because the way that the music industry has changed and and just being in a band is not really what it was eight years ago like or whatever um and so like you know the conversation that i have with being a musician the narrative i have with it is a little bit different than it was say like when the blood brothers were full on touring all year and it's like you know, I've been spending a lot of time trying to just like relearn writing music without some album cycle or some monetary goal in mind. It's and, so easy to get and trapped just, in like yeah, that because you're like, weird. oh, I need to, you know, if yeah. this record's got to come out and, and for the show, yeah. these people are gonna come or who's gonna listen to it. So it's like making that first JR Slayer record for me was a really big. It was a. I mean, I just put it out myself. I, yeah. I recorded everything myself. I mixed it. I had. Um, this guy Justin, who d- does that telephone Tel Aviv, oh, hell yeah. he mastered it, cool. and that was the only person that did anything outside <laughs> of it. I mean, I just made a web. I learned to build a website, and I figured out Bandcamp, and I just put it up because I was like, I don't, I want to do this. I want to make an album and songs. I don't want to like be worried about interviews or if people are yeah. gonna like it or what yeah. they think. When, and when did you move here? I moved here February 2015. Yeah, it's like so different because like when you. So like, for 16, 2016. The, yeah, the dude that I play in a band with writes for like ra- like radio. So it's like, he's like, all right, so we gotta do like it has to sound like this. The sounds have to like, and mm-hmm. and that's just not the way that I was, I yeah. was I was raised in the ways that I played in bands. I you know I played in bands to like be in a band, right, and not like to make sure that something was out on time, to make sure that somebody yeah. heard it, to make sure that it was like scheduled, which is weird because that's what writer cry. Like our our agency, like d- we're focused on, on like schedule. that yeah. stuff of like that's like our livelihood, mm-hmm. and I, it's it's nice to come in from like an opposite. Like I did, I wasn't I didn't go to school for I didn't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like I didn't go to Your school. Your Facebook says school of hard knocks. Yeah, that's well, yeah. Mine. That no, that's mine, you, mine you can always tell who didn't go to school. <laughs> yeah, that on the well, and it's it's interesting you yeah. say that about your your friend because you know. Before I moved here, 
I was like I had mentioned before. I was working with that guy Pat from Train, yeah. And and a large part of working with him was writing with him, and that whole process. Did you write Drops of Jupiter? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I totally You'd wish. You'd be no. wearing like a gold plated yeah. suit, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> walking, know, walking yeah, in here. Totally. Um, no, that? but the, but just the way that that you know writing that kind of music, the mindset that you're in, and the, 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 I was really impressed with, with him in the sense of, like, I had never really listened to Train or been part of mainstream pop music or anything. We just kind of, we met by chance and kind of started working together um, in Seattle. But the way that he is able to sit and just, like, write lyrics and melodies all at the same time, like, he doesn't come yeah. in with, like, I got, like, my lyric book. He's like... Let's do this. Let's like, do it. It's like a like, what's the riff? Dude, like, like a... let's you know, we would sit and you know, and then other people would come in, and we wrote for some other people. Just the, that kind of way of writing music, I, I really love it because it is so different it's from how way different. I've always intuitively made music. It's I just really like that people still care That's about good. it. You don't want to get too comfortable. That's no. true. Yeah, yeah, I'm like it's I want this to go on for a long. I want like another wave. I want like hardcore stuff to come back like mm-hmm. I want things like that to just like be around but emos definitely came back in a major way because you can talk about Urban Outfitters they're like um, their vinyl selection fucking so many emo records yeah Joyce Manor's in it like Joyce, yeah. Joyce Manor yeah that was a wild so like when we played that same FYF um, that we were talking about earlier like they played as well and uh, like I'd, I think our our booking agent was like you, you really should check them out like a they really want to play with you guys or whatever. And we went and checked their, their show out and they like prefaced it by saying like, there's so many great bands at this festival, but um, you know, we're, we can't believe we're playing the same festival as Daysa. Like we started yeah. playing music because of them and all this stuff. And That's it was amazing. such a crazy. And then of course, like we like fell in love with them and took them on tour. And, um, but that is such a wild thing about this. When you talk about this resurgence and when we talk about like the good old days and all that stuff, like, like at some of these shows, like um, I'll do the math and and I'm like, man, so you were like eight years old when this record came out, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. I'm just, like we were both young when that when our records came out too, or like yeah. 19 or whatever. But still, like that. Sometimes when you do the math and you look at like the kids with the X's on their hands and you're yeah, like, that so means strange. yeah that you were yeah you couldn't even like that was the thing. I remember we had we had we've had. Jordan from New Found Glory like a bunch of times and like the first time I met him I was like fuck dude I remember I would like lay in my bedroom is he the at, singer? yeah he's yeah. cool I like him he's a good dude yeah. he like tattoos now and shit and he's just oh, like nice and looks like, like, like Quentin video. Tarantino yeah <laughs> so like he's just like a fucking now dude. he does now he does but like I remember I was like dude I did the ma- I like did my own math and yeah. I was like dude I must have been like 15 like laying on my floor like listening to a cd mm-hmm. you know like a whole way through mm-hmm. and like people used to listen to cds like all the way through yeah, yeah. Well, which what's, cr- what's crazy to me is going to like see these new emo bands like real friends or tiny movie parts or murder baseball mm-hmm. or, or, i don't like, know any of those i don't know anything it's about all, any of that yeah, yeah they're all awesome some like, of them are like, like shows, shows, and it's all new kids they're like you know underage Cool. Uh, we're like into this new resurgence of like pop punk or emo. Yeah. Like, whoa, what the fuck? And that's what like, like when we, person there. Yeah, when we started doing the, those shows again with Desa and we started <laughs> touring again, we figured like I don't know, I was just thinking that it would be you know, everyone would be like my age and they right. would have hired babysitters and you sure. know, and it was like this whole nother yeah, it was it's cool. It's a wild fucking thing and the new bands are re- there are some mm-hmm. really, really, so really tight. good bands. Before yeah. like you go, like we'll, Tiny Moving we'll, Parks we'll, like, they're rad. What? Tiny Moving Parks. Yeah, I fucking love Who's those guys. I met those dudes in uh we played with them in um Atlanta like with Harmar and like they they're from like some tiny town in yeah. Minnesota mm-hmm. and like we just yeah they're like oh, Harmar's from Minnesota mm-hmm. too. and we're just like buddies now just like text each other all the That's time rad. yeah I yeah, love those guys awesome. they're so sweet just texting yeah just like you know what I mean like <laughs> remember when you could text bands you yeah. Yeah. like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> remember when we weren't bros with everybody yeah. that we listened you know? to <laughs> but it's like I feel like it's it's one thing when it's like you know people like our age and bands that we've known and toured with for years and then when it's like a an up and coming like band that people mm-hmm. are into and then you know and they're like can I text you and they're like can I can I send you the link to our new record yeah. will you check it out and that's it's like amazing. that's so rad like of course yeah I'll send it to yeah, my manager you have to play yeah. it stuff. <laughs> yeah. send that's it to my I assistant think, I think you guys should check out that dude York band because they're so good it's yeah. like yeah. guitar bass yeah. drums there's a male and a female singer 
It's they're really not weird. like necessarily an emo band, but it's they're not like it's Mates, a Mates of State. That's you know? okay. I mean, we fucking like we we. That's not like all we. Yeah. We, it's right. just like now it's like an encompassing like. Thing. It's just like rock and roll. It's, yeah, it's, it's making me happy that people are listening to guitars and that's the thing, and that's what and, it's super important. It's like really important right now, and like going to shows is like it's it's became less of a chore and mm-hmm. more of like an inspiring thing to do. Yeah. Nothing makes sense anymore because everything that we listened to when we were growing up, like you were made fun of by a, a larger yeah. audience, and mm-hmm. then now everyone's like, "This is tight." I, I th- it is cool to like <laughs> listen to like. I think about that a lot with Third Eye Blind because all my friends used to give me so much shit. Did I'm like, they actually give you shit about yeah. Third Eye Blind? Yeah, and I was like, I'm the fucking greatest it's band awesome. ever. Awesome, I love that. And the there's graduate. so much, there's so much <laughs> cool guitar stuff on that whole album. Yeah. Like, so many people dismiss bands because they don't like the singer or whatever. Or at the time, it was too. I don't know what it was, but now all those people are like, oh, I can't wait. They're they're touring with the uh, Silver Sun Pickups in July, and I'm going <laughs> yeah. to. I'm like, fuck you. Like, yeah, right. Dude, I played. I'm here fucking, from the beginning. Uh, TJ, I play Third Eye Blind and Emo Night every single night. Well, every and that's single, the thing too. Like time. emo. I feel like that is it's such a broad term now like the same way like punk yeah, can be just like, like a, you know the yeah, sex pistols emo, are big emo to me was something very different than I think than what even like exists at emo now. and I think it was like, something to like me like still life yeah and Antioch Arrow and those were like emo bands shout out Aaron mineral. I was just about to say yeah and like, and and like mineral I have, yeah. a, I'm working on a project with Aaron <laughs> oh really yeah. I have a pro- I have an electronic project with uh the Baron called, called Raytheon. Rad. He's the coolest, <laughs> man. He's the, he's the coolest. Tight. Yeah. He's, he's the he's the dude that works at Lash. Oh, yeah, oh we okay. Did, we just had yeah. a DJ night there last night. He's the godfather of Screamo. Dude, that was like the original Baron. Screamo. Yeah. Was like he was in a band called Antioch Arrow that basically was the There were be- what? 3 three one G, right? I think maybe 3 one G or GSL, but they were the beginning of like the Blood Brothers at the drive in, like everything that came like all that arty hardcore like sort of was bird. Gotta get him in here. Like, what? Gotta get him in here. Aaron's actually tight. Dude, yeah. that would be fucking yeah. cool. He works at the lash, cool right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We can get him in. It's yeah, cool. we're like shooting like two things at the lash this month. Have you guys been in the lash? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's dark. It, it is literally <laughs> what you would think it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it, tight. Did it I looks know. like um, a German dentist office. Jacob had his wedding reception there. I did have my wedding reception oh, awesome. there. We had free tacos uh, taco inside. zone outside. Yeah, Sold. Catering. Dude, I just saw it at the drive-in. When they played... So good. Oh, Were you there? I was there, yeah. I was actually tour managing them for the last couple tours. Nice. So. It's so great. <laughs> I know, that's what yeah. TJ said. Do you yeah. know my buddy yeah. Chase yeah. Ortega? Yeah. Oh, Ty. Yeah, yeah. I saw him the other day. I went to his warehouse because there was oh, some yeah. of Cedric's. He had some of his merchandise there. It was fucking That band is yeah. still like one of my all time favorite live bands. They're great. I did one of these fucking things where I was like, I'm going to go and I'm going to I'm gonna watch it and I'm going to stay off my phone mm-hmm. the whole time because I want to watch it. But I couldn't. And I ended Must up just like Snapchat. filming everything. No, I ended up just like being like, this is fucking so important. Everybody watch this. is like uh-huh. really yeah. every single song. I was like, damn it, god damn it, this is fucking so good. And I was like, I, you know how you take videos and you never watch them? Uh-huh. I watched every single <laughs> one of them. Awesome. Like, uh, like when I got home and the next day, and I was like, holy shit, dude, it was fucking great. Because I I actually, had, I don't think I've ever seen at the drive-in before. And it was one of those mm-hmm. things I never thought I would be able to uh-huh. see at the drive-in ever yeah. again. Yeah. And so it was really, really, I mean, really. I think that a lot of people felt that way yeah. about it, which is why it was such a big deal it was mm-hmm. really important you know? it was just a really really important show for me I fucking really loved it so good yeah I just don't know how to get tired after like two songs <laughs> I get tired after like two I get no tired. one said they did they it go, yeah. Yeah. yeah they just, like, I'm just like they just keep going and there's I feel like the same way like we love to sit around and like you know exchange like print stories mm-hmm. me and my friends like about these like legendary things he's done in the studio mm-hmm. and all the interactions and stuff and I feel like everyone has like their own at the drive in like live story about like <laughs> Cedric like running like on people's shoulders like through the crowd mm-hmm. and like sta- ending up like standing on top of like two people and singing and running back you know it's like how did you do that and not fall like that's like some walk on water stuff I don't that's know. Uh, Dillinger Escape Plan did that too mm-hmm. like the, yeah like uh, it's and the makeup <laughs> Do you ever see that? There's a video of Dillinger yeah, Escape Plan yeah. playing like the Virgin Mega Store in like New York, and right when they start, uh, I forget the lead singer's name, but he basically just runs out into the audience, like on top of them, and then just comes back to the stage, mm-hmm. and then they start their set. It's so crazy. Yeah. Remember, uh, what is it called? Like 
head walking or head walking baby that was like a thing yeah people in, did in the that. hardcore scene mm-hmm. huh. there was a bunch of weird stuff picking the- up change <laughs> when yeah, yeah. what was your favorite moves I, man i don't know what it this this was like the first time that i actually saw something and i was like i don't know what's going on and i'm <laughs> old i don't know what the hell but i saw this video someone shot at um warp tour and there's some move where it looks like everyone is like they've got their own little space and they're like fighting invisible ninjas or something you know what i'm talking about i know what you're talking about i don't know what yeah, it is it's a weird thing it it's cool i just i was like I, I have no clue i think i'm officially too old now i think this just <laughs> yeah like fight invisible ninja? yeah they're it's just like throwing it, weird like punches like, and it's, kicking it's called like, tutting tutting no, 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 it's, 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 it's <laughs> now <laughs> dude fucking <laughs> really dude have you seen like is wall of death like a hardcore thing oh wall like of death metal is thing so wall of death do you know what that is don't. Okay, so um. Wall of Death is the premise. There was this band from Vegas that would do it called, oh my god, what, what was Wall that? Death? Awful. Do you know what it is? Not I awful. I think Trash Talk does it. It's where they run for one side. So yeah, side. basically uh, they separate the, the, yeah. the crowd into two parts, and they're like, you go on this wall, you go on this wall. It's some like P.E. in Oh, like Red shit. Rover kind of thing? Yeah, and... It, like as soon as the song starts basically like they have to merge and then there's also you know like you you blend in like Dude, white people know. merge <laughs> <laughs> assimilate <laughs> now and they all ran towards the bar and i was scared i was like oh shit how do i get out of this i never Sweet. it's funny the only time i was ever in the pit for a show growing up was i was so excited to see norma jean Mm. And it was right when, like, that second record came out, like, Bless the the Martyr, Martyr, Kiss the Child. Yeah. And that was, like... That was, like, a 10 out of 10 album. This is when I discovered, like, what, like, a a real breakdown is. (laughs) And uh, I got, I think, Me Without You opened for them. This is, like, your classic fucking Trust Kill show Mm -hmm. in Tucson, but... uh, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you never heard the word breakdown more than when somebody was like talking about Norma Jean. You knew that word was coming. Do you remember right broke at... downs? No, it was like that? the really sl- the slower breakdown uh-huh. when you do it really slow. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I I remember I I looked up like it was pretty recently. I looked up like so- slowest breakdown yeah. or something. Oh, it's like wow. yeah, it's just like a it's like a minute apart. Wow. It's just like fucking so wow. Did Blood Brothers ever write just a straight up hardcore song? Mm, when we started the band, we were really like inspired by Death Wish Kids and Area 51, which, oh, yeah. which were like the predecessors to Murder City Devils. Totally. Um, and they were a lot more punky and hardcore, but so we sounded like that on our first like little like demo tapes. Yeah. And then, but we never had any like jug jug like hardcore like we had parts because yeah. we like grew up going to hardcore like you can bo- you can hear and, it. yeah I was just know. gonna say like botch or like kill Sadie yeah or, or like, or like um, I feel like northwestern hardcore though had its own yeah it was different because kill Sadie it was more was twangy there. yeah like so it was like yeah but... or like you know I think I was probably the most influenced by hardcore like. Like bands like Converge and Hell yeah. and, and I love Lodge and, We use Converge on our reel. But we never. <laughs> but that was the thing. There were so many different personalities in the group, and everyone was coming from such a different place. Yeah. Like it was like our drummer just listened to Wu Tang, and our bass player was just into jazz, and you know. You can tell. Johnny and Jordan were into Prince and Nick Cave, and then you know I was like more into hardcore, so that was kind of where the hardcore part of the band yeah. and, like, sort of filtered in and so, so but no we never had any like i mean i think everything we ever recorded was, is available i don't yeah. think there's any like hidden songs so since you both have experience doing like solo records do you find it hard to work with each other no it's no. it's amazingly <laughs> that's easy. like the that's the worst part about working on music now mm-hmm. as i'm older it's like i just I want to do everything on my own. Oh. I See, I kind of have, like, the, the opposite problem because for so long now I've, I, because I do, like, I, I did stuff for, like, TV and for stuff like that, too, so it's like you just, you're at a computer, you're writing everything, you do everything, and I spend so much time writing by myself Yeah, that I, I'm just pretty sick of it and, and I get True. like it's hard because it's like man yeah well I can play the guitar here and the bass and write the drums but then it just sounds like one person's idea so it's it, like the the cool thing for me is like I bring a part 
and start playing it with Denver and Jonah, and then suddenly it's like, well, what if we try this? And then it's you like, guys well, like, I never would have tried jam that. out. Kind of. We don't really jam that. We just have someone have I'm a always heart. so scared. Dare, dare I say? I'm scared yeah, of the word I know, jam. I I'm like, hate that. <laughs> every every Blood Brothers song was written by jamming. But yeah, we've yeah. spent hours jamming and did nothing. Where did you? Where do you guys practice here? ABC. What's yeah, it? Jonah it's has a space. East side, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, east side. Over like near Highland Park. Yeah. And the other thing too, I was gonna say on that subject, like uh, I feel like I've also I do like a. I'm just like a classic like half asser where I'll like demo stuff and I'll get like so far and then I'll just like leave yeah, it and it'll just sit in my iTunes forever, you know, yeah. like yeah. and so I feel like I really do need to have like other collaborators point, yeah. to push me to finish stuff because I was a bit like, oh yeah, I'll just someday, you know. And mm-hmm. so yeah, that's maybe I need to stop being an asshole about it. <laughs> but it, but at the same time, I don't know. Whatever works for you. The schedule thing is a nightmare. That's like, the so thing. Is like I don't even know it if it's me better. just not wanting to work with people. I just don't have time. Like right. I mm-hmm. I do this like full time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like this is art. this eats up my my whole life. But then I also am like, it's the curse of being a musician where you're just like, okay, like I need. Like, you know, I, I don't want to go to the bar. I want to go work on music. Yeah, I, I, I flew back from uh, San Francisco this last weekend, and I, I fucking listened to, like, every Tiger's Jaw album. They're playing. I know, they're playing but Sunday. Yeah. And, like, I fucking, I was like, all right. I, I was like, all right, I'm going to write songs. Like, I get, and, like, it cool. sucks because, like, it's, like, good and bad because I have we have so much work to do all uh, the time. But, like, I, like... There's a feeling there that you like have to do it. You have to yeah. like, do that shit, and it's, and I think that that's the challenge between the, like growing up and like like Jacob was saying, being like fucking getting a job and like being in a band and like wanting to make this shit. So it's yeah. Well, when did you get older too? I feel like I don't know. Maybe I'm just gonna totally sound like an old man here, but like I feel like I missed that when I was younger. I feel like I had just such drivers. Like I can't wait to get home and demo all night and yeah. do this, and then now I'll get home back. Like, so what's on Netflix? Like, yeah. It's, hey, you watch Fargo? Oh, yeah. It's the best show on TV. So into it. It's the best show on TV. Yeah, I'm heavy into that. And Better Call Saul, currently. Yeah, I like it. Oh, Better Call Saul's great. So good. I fucking It took me a second to get into it, but then I was like, why am I not watching it? It's like all the right parts of Breaking Bad. Maybe I'm feminine, but I like Big Little Lies. That's a good show. I heard that's amazing. I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard it's incredible. No, it was a good show. It was really good. It was done really well. But also, it's like they shot it in the most beautiful place in like the world and it's always overcast and you can like they're like it looks great I'm like the cast is all like super it's like the most amazing cast what just happened that's you oh Oh, it's like you can like hear like everything it sounds like a giant feedback when you're fucking kicking the (laughs) bot Okay, I, got it I got really excited about Big Little Lies. Yeah, it's like, it was a great show. It's like, but shooting anything and like, where where was it? Monterey Valley. Monterey. Yeah, it's like. But even more gorgeous good. is just a little bit south of that. Big Sur. You guys been? No. I want to go. So I want to go to that. What is it? The Post Ranch Inn. Yeah. Oh, there's some hotel there. I'm yeah. like, I in. There's I got the hotel known up in Mendocino. Oh, nice. Big mm-hmm. Then you had the like after party thing after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. But yeah, Fargo's awesome. I have a huge now. crush on that. What is it, Dude. Mary Elizabeth Winstead? Or the, every I, like I could do a whole I could do three hours of yeah. Fargo podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, like, start a Fargo podcast. You really should. It's fucking. So have you seen that Golden good. Girls podcast where the two dudes just? review every single episode of the golden Girls. no Maybe that's a that good like, idea that sounds amazing Fargo. i just found out there's like this secret like after golden girls there was another show called golden palace what that took like where three of them moved to miami and bought this hotel and then like tommy i think it's tommy chong and a young don Cheadle like run it with them <laughs> and i was like how did we not know no, but you can download it like the the golden girl like fan club put it up online or whatever and like I was all stoked. I was like, I didn't even know about this hidden gem. Yeah, don't cheat on. So all when right. are you guys playing again? Um, Back to the old schedule debate. We're trying to find like a show like like we next week. The, we want to play this month. Yeah, we want to jump on some shows like. Well, we asked you guys. I know. <laughs> I know. And then it's but always it's like, is it someone's coming. Right? Is it twenty fourth? Is that? Yeah. yeah, but I feel like Jonah's gone. Yeah. So. I think you guys. Well, that's what happens when your drummer is on like 5,000 TV shows. (laughs) So, did you know a little. (laughs) It's always drummers that fuck it up, too. A little trivia. So, on on Mystery Science Theater on Netflix, um, 
which Jonah Ray hosts. You guys should watch. You are on the but yeah, I'm in the song. band. Wait, I'm sorry. Oh, Jonah Ray is the drummer of guys' new band? I yeah. didn't catch that. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Where you been? I'm like a huge fan of the Meltdown. I'd go every day yeah. when they did so it. So he's our drummer. And he, he was going to try to come today, but he had a meeting. I didn't know this. But, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know what Jonah you guys are talking about. That's amazing. Look. So yeah, we're in, we're in that <laughs> band. About, uh, Jonah Hill. Yeah. <laughs> I love Jonah Hill yeah. too, but I really do love Jonah Ray. I, I wonder <laughs> how Jonah Hill plays drums. Um, no, so we're... Yeah, we're in that in pressers together in real life, and then I'm in the t- the band, the house band on Mystery Science Theater. Like I play the guitar, and you can see me like in the. We'll intro put a stuff. link in our bio. <laughs> yeah. For that also. yeah, so people can stream Mystery Science Theater. Yeah. Don't download it. No, stream, stream it from Netflix. Hidden, Hidden America just. Yeah, yeah Hidden America too. Out as well, and yep. yeah, you guys have the busiest drummer on earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're never gonna That's play. Cool. It, so. <laughs> yeah. Let's but get a drum machine. If we can find a show to jump on between June eighth and June twentieth, we're gonna jump on it. Yeah. <laughs> when is uh, the Elmo night? Oh no. I know. July's could... July's gonna be a cool one. Uh, yeah, us. that's when he's like on Mystery Science Theater tour. He's, they're going out for like oh, two yeah, months. Yeah, I saw that. Like, Holy so I'm thing. sleeping yeah. on Mystery Science Theater. Jonah Ray's hosting Mystery Science Theater. Yeah, Who else yeah. is hosting it? Uh, Patton Oswalt's in it. Um, I forget who else. Ricky out of the well, Jonah's the host. There's only one host. Yeah, there's only one host. Oh, <laughs> the original yeah. host, Joel, like he directs them all. Like He's there and he oh, pops wow. up that's, in a... I didn't and, know he was involved. That's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. yeah, it's like his thing. Yeah, he, actually, I think he and Jonah kind of like... Didn't they like do this. the original? The way this all came about is, uh, they did like a Kickstarter. The fans right? like brought it back. That's yeah, crazy. Whoa! I think Jonah helped like spearhead it because you know he loved the show and wanted to do. I mean, he literally made his dream come true. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, Jonah's cool. I met him through Sean. Yeah. Yep. Me too. Sean's brought. Can we talk about Sean for a second? Carl? Sure. Sean, no, Sean uh, Tillman, Har- Harmar. 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 Well, I know Denver because we played together in, in Harmar for a while. And, yeah, Sean's brought together. Sean is, like, almost like the cashier of... Yeah, he just know. he's, like, own everyone own. knows him. And he and yeah. he and he's one of those dudes that was, like, you know, there with the Strokes when 30 people were at their show in Lawrence and then was there with them again at the or Madison Square, or whatever. Like, he yeah. knows, he just... And same with like that the, at the driving mm-hmm. dudes like he just knows everyone. Yeah, and he's just been around. Been around. He's just like the guy. He's the best. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> but we played uh, Sean and I as Harmar like played Jonah's wedding, and um, we had learned some cover songs for some other wet like corporate event we played that was like uh, wedding themed. Like one of the ladies in the office like fake married Jose. Um, who's a bit Jose Canseco. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said home was a Cuervo. That would have been awesome. But anyway, so we'd learned some covers. And so we were playing these, like, wedding covers at his, at his wedding. And we played Power of Love, you know, like, from, like, Back to the Future. And totally. he kind of prefaced it. He's like, yeah, this is... Hue- Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, you guys look like Back to the Future fans. Everyone got kind of quiet and weird. I'm like, we're all, we're all back to... The, we're all the same age. Like, this makes sense. And so we played it. And then halfway through the song, the actor that played Biff was at the oh, wedding yeah. and came Holy up on shit. stage and stole the mic That's and like finished it and he totally went into like Biff character and then he wanted us to do like he did this big hand gesture and he expected us to just hit a note but we were all <laughs> just like we were so shocked at what was going on he's like you're and he was like total in character he's like hey butthead you were supposed to play a note when I did that and he came up and fucking slapped me across the face like I mean like a stage slap and then I fell on the ground and he like he like stormed he out got he, like, up and whooped his ass yeah, yeah. I fought him no but he made the crowd <laughs> ruin the wedding he made the crowd like part like he's like I'm and he stormed off wall and then they death. did a wall of death yeah, yeah. <laughs> wedding wall of death wedding does uh, Sean take his clothes off during weddings too he has. I mean, he doesn't really take his clothes off anymore, oh, that's period. Right. But he, he, oh. I've he seen him do it at weddings. Oh, and I was worried, like, I wonder what grandma's going to think about this. But, he yeah, does, he's done it before. He does, like, a cape thing now or something. Yeah, right? I think he still gets, like, topless. He does what he does. Yeah. Did Tom's you know that Carmar Superstar played Hamlet Everything when we first started in 2011? That's awesome. I saw Sean. Played what? Before the rap party, I, I did. Oh, before oh. the rap party, I just, like, mixed things together. We had Harmar play. Oh, awesome. I think the first time I saw Sean was... At Coachella 2004, and he played with Junior Senior, and I had no idea who he was, but he was doing his like hand th- his head thing. Yeah. yeah, he's just one of those dudes. Just pops up. I everywhere. feel like we're talking about him like he died. Yeah. <laughs> I remember him well. Yeah, he wrote he wrote TV shows, movies too. Does he? 
Oh, he's did been in a lot of stuff. Did you write Search Party stuff. with, uh, what's your face? Is he involved in Search Party? Do you know? Not Search Party. They did another one before, like, it was called, like, Stitchin' Bitch or something, and it oh. got bought by HBO or something, but I don't think it ever made it to... He's made his cameos, too. Yeah. He's, he's in an episode stuff. of Hidden America on the new mm-hmm. season. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah. He's, he's also in, in, um, the Drew Barrymore movie. Yeah, Whip It? Whip It. Yeah. I remember he had, a uh, the Whip It carpet... Oh, it is house. Yeah. He stole it from the premiere. Yep. <laughs> we should have stole a bunch of shit La La Land shit wow. yesterday from Interscope. Oh, well, they, oh. Yeah. Think, yeah. All right. Yeah, we got to wrap it. Sean yeah. gave me this thing like like ten minutes ago. Yeah. We, we so can yeah, I mean, you guys it. are gonna play soon. Yeah. And yeah. So we're gonna try to record in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and just let us know. We'll push whatever we fucking. When the schedules align, we're definitely yeah. gonna play. When your drummer is not being a super, super fucking star, famous. Mm-hmm. Then Telling jokes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mr. Funny hey, Man. You guys to, are no longer the famous. I wanted people to thank you band. guys though for having us. Yeah. No, yeah, we really want to cool. thank, thank you guys you. for yeah. being in like the greatest band. You guys are super tight. <laughs> and yeah. My thanks, childhood and, thanks yeah. you guys. <laughs> thank you. And we really appreciate it. So it's really yeah. nice to like have people in here that we really, really cool. genuinely love. Thank you. So, thanks a lot. Thank you guys thank so you. much. All right.